Have you ever wanted to get into home winemaking but weren't really sure where to start? Have you ever tasted fruit wine and thought, I wish I could make something like that? Well, I'm Tim Vandergrift for Master Vintner Series, and today I'm going to demonstrate the Fresh Harvest Fruit Wine Making Kit and show you just how easy it is to make your own fruit wine. The Master Vintner Fresh Harvest Fruit Wine Making Kit includes a two gallon primary fermenter with a grommeted lid that fits an airlock. It also includes a one gallon clear glass jug with a screw cap that fits the airlock as well. It also includes 10 tips for better winemaking info card, the Enjoy Home Winemaking booklet, a 3 8 inch curved racking cane, and a siphon hose. It contains a triple scale hydrometer, a nylon straining bag for containing fruit, a package of oxygen wash, three packages of Red Star Montrachet yeast, and the chemicals yeast nutrient, acid blend, pectic enzyme, Camden tablets, wine tannin, and potassium sorbate. All of these will help you make an excellent fruit wine. We've assembled all of our equipment and ingredients. Today I've chosen to make a blackberry wine. We're going to use a can of fruit puree. This makes it pretty easy, but blackberries grow wild in many places in North America, so you can pick your own. And there's dozens of other fruits and many, many recipes that you can follow. We're going to do this one today to show you the basics. The first step is to sanitize your equipment. Your Master Vintner Series Fresh Harvest Fruit Kit contains oxygen wash. This is an excellent cleaner and sanitizer, and it'll keep any spoilage bacteria or wild organisms from changing the flavor of your wine. It's important to follow the directions and mix one ounce per gallon of warm water, allow it to soak, and rinse thoroughly. We've cleaned and dried everything to start with, so we can get going right away. Our first step is to get our recipe together. I've assembled one from information I've got on home winemaking. You can look at a variety of sources for your winemaking recipes, but they all involve combining a certain amount of fresh fruit, sugar, nutrients, and other ingredients to produce a balanced finished wine. Today we're using this can of fruit puree, and the first step is to dissolve some of our sugar that we're going to need in water and mix it into our primary fermenter. The sugar added in the beginning isn't for sweetness. That's going to be fermented out and turned into alcohol by the yeast. So we'll follow our recipe and add about three quarters of a pound of sugar to warm water and dissolve it into our primary fermenter. We've dissolved three quarters of a pound of sugar in one quart of warm water. The next step is to add our additives. We're going to use a half teaspoon of acid blend. We're also going to add one teaspoon of yeast nutrient. And a half teaspoon of pectic enzyme. Between the three of these, the acid blend will help balance the flavor. The yeast nutrient will make sure we get a clean, thorough fermentation. And the pectic enzyme will break down the pectins and gums in the blackberries and make sure that the wine clears on time. We'll stir these in thoroughly. The next step is to add our blackberry puree. Pour carefully. It's a little sticky and stains like the dickens. If you're using other fruits, you'll have to handle them in different ways. Fresh blackberries will need to go into uh, a sock like this, which will keep the seeds out of solution and let you pull out the pulp at the end of the fermentation. Luckily for us, this is very well strained, so we don't have to worry about it. Our next step is to top up this fermenter to the one gallon mark with lukewarm water. Just before we add the yeast, we're going to take a specific gravity reading of the must to make sure we're in the right sugar range. For this particular recipe, we want to be between about 1090 and 1100. So we'll get a sample and check to make sure that it hits just about the right space. We can always tweak it by adding a little bit more sugar if we need to. Following the instructions on the back of our handout sheet, we've made ourselves a yeast starter. Follow those instructions carefully. It's a couple of steps, but it's your guarantee of good success. When the starter is ready to go, pitch it right into the must. Next, we're going to put a lid on our primary fermenter. Make sure to close it firmly and attach the airlock by inserting it into the grommet in the lid. We're going to wait five to seven days before we can process this. However, we need to open this up and give it a stir once every day to make sure all the ingredients stay mixed and that it ferments thoroughly. 
We've stirred this once every day for the last seven days. And now, after checking the gravity, we see that it's below 1.030. That's perfect. It's time to transfer it from the primary fermenter into our one gallon glass jug. We'll do that with our siphon rod and hose. You can start this a variety of ways, but the way that I really like to do it best is the easiest. Simply use the tap to fill the entire hose and siphon rod with water, cover the soft end with your thumb, plunge it into the fermenter, and then drain it into the glass jug. Once we've finished racking and the gallon jug is full, we'll attach our airlock and put it in our fermenting area for four weeks. We'll check the gravity then and make sure that it's below 1.000. At that point, we'll be able to rack it off the sediment that's accumulated and add our finishing compounds. This is going to be potassium metabisulfite, sorbate, and a fining agent to clear it up. Our wine has been fined to clear it and render it beautiful and brilliant. The last step is to add some potassium metabisulfite and some sorbate to make sure that it doesn't re-ferment in our bottles. We're going to be using Camden tablets for our metabisulfite. We'll dissolve the tablet in a small amount of warm water along with the sorbate. One Camden tablet and one half teaspoon of sorbate should do the job for us. Once it's completely dissolved, we can add it to our jug. Now, we're ready to bottle. Be sure to sterilize your bottles and your corks, and when you're filling them, make sure that you leave enough room between the top of the wine and the bottom of the cork for about two fingers of airspace. You don't want to overfill them or it's very difficult to get the corks in. Once your bottles are full, seal them with a good quality cork. Leave them upright for three days to allow the pressure inside to equalize with the outside air and for the corks to seat fully. After three days, you can turn them on their side to let them age. Your wine might taste good right away, but let it age for two or three months and you will be amazed at how delicious it actually is. And that's how easy it is to make your own fruit wine with Master Vintner's Fresh Harvest Fruit Wine Making Kit. For more information, check out our website. I'm Tim Vandergriff from Master Vintners. Happy winemaking. Mm -hmm.